With Kroger brand products from Bakers, you can make all your favorite things this holiday season. Because Kroger brand's proven quality products come at exceptionally low prices. And with a money-back quality guarantee, every dish is sure to be a favorite. These are a few of my favorite things. Whether you shop delivery, pickup, or in-store, Kroger brand has all your favorite things. Bakers, fresh for everyone. With Kroger brand products from Bakers, you can make all your favorite things this holiday season. Because Kroger brand's proven quality products come at exceptionally low prices. And with a money-back quality guarantee, every dish is sure to be a favorite. These are a few of my favorite things. Whether you shop delivery, pickup, or in-store, Kroger brand has all your favorite things. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Today's show is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at tryexpressvpn.com slash space. That's tryexpressvpn.com slash space for three months free with a one-year package. Visit tryexpressvpn.com slash space to learn more. 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 10, 9... Ignition sequence start. Space nuts. Five, four, three, two. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Space nuts. Astronauts report it feels good. Hello again and thank you for joining us on Space Nuts, the podcast. My name's Andrew Dunkley and joining me as always, astronomer at large, Fred Watson. Hi, Fred. Hey, Andrew, you sound as though you've still got a bit of a cold there. I picked up another one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I seem to always see, I always seem to do that right at the end of the season. I don't know why. It's, it's you know, I'm as reliable as a two-bob watch when it comes to this sort of thing. But uh, here I am struggling through yet again. Yes, just as well we're separated by 400 kilometres, really, isn't Yes, it? I wish I was separated by 400 kilometres from the person who gave it to me. Yeah, never mind, yeah. yeah. Oh, 300 miles, by the way. Yeah, that too. Mm. 290 or something. <laughs> anyway, now, enough uh, of that, enough of that. Now, what today, have we got today, Andrew? <laughs> we've got a, a topic that's been spawned by an email with a single line question. Should I lose sleep about this? Uh, that, that's a question that came from Michael Carey with a link to a story about a dark matter hurricane. So, Michael, we will look into this in a year or two and let you know. <laughs> uh, the Irish UFO uh, that's been making the news, it's, it's everywhere. I had a look this morning uh, before I did my radio show and just about every news service I went to had a story about this Irish phenomenon. So uh, we'll talk about that. And we do have uh, a question uh, from Rob in Victoria as well about falling into a black hole. Uh, Rob also has a, another rather unsavoury request of me, which we'll discuss later. But first, let's uh, talk about this, um, this strange uh, phenomenon, the dark matter hurricane. What's that all about, Fred? Uh, it's about something that sounds a lot more mundane when you put it into the terms that astro astronomers understand. Uh, and that is a stream of stars. So uh, one of the things, in fact, it's some of the work that um, the, the group that I work with have done, um, but although this, this story is not from them. Um, what, one of the things we do is look at large numbers of stars with uh, equipment on a big telescope, spectroscopic equipment, which allows us to, to measure the speeds of the stars. Uh, and we look for streams of stars. That's to say stars that are all kind of moving in the same direction, uh, uh, particularly in the halo of the galaxy. So by that, what I mean is, um, as you know, our galaxy has a disk. Its uh, disk is a flattened spiral structure. The sun is embedded in the disk of our galaxy, uh, along with about 400 billion other stars. But as well as the disk, the galaxy has what we call the halo, which is a much more rarefied region, uh, which is a kind of spherical distribution of stars. Um, actually much bigger than the disk. So you can think of the disk sitting in this spherical halo of stars. We've known about that for more than a century. Uh, what we haven't known about it is that that halo is probably um, also the, the, uh, the place where dark matter lurks. And dark matter is this stuff who, uh, which has 
it, it has mass in the sense that we can see its gravitational effect, mm. but that's the only way that it interacts with things. So it doesn't silhouette against brighter objects. It doesn't emit any kind of radiation. It doesn't interact with other normal atoms. So it's uh, in the room that both you and I, or the, the rooms that you and I are sitting in, Andrew, it's here, it outweighs normal matter by about five to one. Uh, and it tends to be, we believe that in galaxies it's shaped like the halo. Okay, so the halo is the place where you look for streams of stars which are uh, symptomatic of uh, smaller galaxies that have been swallowed up by our own galaxy. So our Milky Way galaxy is a big one. It's a bit of a bully. Uh, it had, when it was formed, lots of smaller galaxies all um, in orbit around it. Those, to, to a large extent, have now been digested by our own galaxy. But their fossils are there in these streams of stars which orbit around the centre of our own galaxy. And this story is about one of them. Not observed actually with our telescope or even any ground-based telescope. This is data that has come from the Gaia spacecraft, which is a European spacecraft that also looks at the velocities of stars. Not by the same technique that we do. Uh, we look at what's called the radial velocity. That's the line of sight velocity, which comes from the way the, the, the spectrum uh, of the star uh, is measured. Uh, what Gaia looks for is something called the transverse velocity. It's the, it's the velocity across the field of view. Uh, in other words, how fast a star appears to be moving. We actually give it a technical term. We call it the proper motion of the star. Um, and it's, it's so accurate in measuring its positions, this Gaia, it can measure to a tiny fraction of an arc second, mm. um, that it only has to look at a bunch of stars one year, look at them the next year and see how they've moved, and it can plot where these star streams are. So there is a star stream with the unspeakably elegant name of S1. Yes, I, uh, I just noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that is what I would normally call the Sagittarius star stream because that's the most prominent in the sky, and I think that's what they're talking about here. Mm -hmm. But what these uh, scientists have inferred, and this is almost certainly correct, uh, is that along with the stars in a star stream, there are remnants of the dark matter that was in that baby galaxy that got swallowed up. So the, they suggest that as well as the way the stars move in a star stream, they're kind of also... Um, there's, a, there's a bulk flow of dark matter there as well. And what they've done is they've measured the velocity of the S1 stream, and it seems to be going through our own neighbourhood. This is why it's a story, because we are embedded in this star stream. Uh, the stars are whizzing past us, basically, not that we can see them doing that, but if we could look, come back in a million years, we'd see them all whizzing past. Uh, or we would see that they have whizzed past. That's how it would work. Yeah. Um, so what they infer is that we are in a kind of gale force wind of dark matter which is accompanying these stars. Um, it's got a speed in the region of 500 kilometres per second. That's more than 300 uh, miles per second. So this is big stuff. It is. Um, bearing in mind that the sun itself goes around the galactic centre at round about 250 kilometres per second. So it's a comparable, you know, comparable velocity to, to the motion that, that is carrying us around the centre of our galaxy. Mm. So it's an interesting story. But don't worry about um, this dark matter hurricane. In a million years or so, it, it will have blown itself out. We'll have gone through it and um, uh, we won't be any the wiser. Yes, so the, the, the probability is that uh, many, many generations, assuming humans survive, will go through this and we won't notice a thing. We won't because it doesn't interact in any way with normal, normal matter. Normal time and space, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> um, so, Michael, you do not need to lose any sleep about this. So. That's the answer, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's interesting when you talk about the speeds, like 500 kilometres per second uh, as the dark matter passes us and, and the Earth uh, or the Sun uh, moving at 250 kilometres per second, I think you said. Yes, that's right. Why don't we feel that? Like, the Earth's moving at a mighty rate of knots too, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it is. So the Earth goes around the sun at 30 kilometres per second. That's right. We're travelling at that speed now. Um, but, but the reason why we don't feel it is because we, um, the, the, the only thing we feel is the gravitational pull of the Earth itself. So because we're stuck to the Earth, um, what the Earth does is 
does not really have an impact on us. You know, if the earth ground to a halt, then we'd feel that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, that's not going to happen. Uh, as, as long as um, normal, normal orbital dynamics continues to work uh, and nothing runs into the earth, which is, you know, um, what we're scouring the skies for, uh, looking for uh, wanton asteroids. Uh, it, with, with all that, um, the, 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 the only thing we feel, as I said, is the, the earth's gravitational pull. So uh, we don't feel any of those velocities that the Earth is participating in. And that's one reason why it took so long for people to figure out that we're not at the center of the universe, because the, the gravitational pull of the Earth is, it gives us such a, you know, a, persu um, a persuasive view of the fact that we are at the center of everything. Yeah, well, and understandable in, in those days that people would think that. And um, I, I think many were called heretics for thinking otherwise for a while. They, they were, yeah. yeah. Some of them were burned at the stake for that. That's yeah, right. and, and, and the, the discovery or the announcement that our sun was a star also had um, people burned at the stake. There, you, know, you had to be careful what you said in the past. You did, yeah. And you <laughs> it's, still it's do still a, a bit like degree. that. <laughs> yes, Not indeed. quite the same. <laughs> but I think we're more open-minded now. I think we, we are more willing to accept possibilities um, as against probabilities and investigate them and, and that may well lead to better learning down the track. One would hope so anyway. Yeah, in mm. the, indeed that's right. All right, Michael, thank you for bringing that to our attention and hopefully uh, you will sleep better tonight. You're listening to Space Nuts with Andrew Dunkley and Fred Watson. Now let's take a little break and find out more about our sponsor, Express VPN, rated number one by Tech Radar. Uh, this is the one I use. I've been using it for a couple of years and I love it. When I joined Express VPN, they were, they were brand new, uh, new to the market, but uh, I read a lot of reviews and did a lot of comparisons. And there was just something about their, their business model that I particularly liked. And a couple of years down the track, honestly, can't complain. Their interface is very easy to use. Their, their service is second to none. Uh, I've had to contact them a couple of times about um, certain things that I wanted to do and they were brilliant. So you may be wondering why I do need a VPN at all. It's all about privacy. Uh, do you really want big tech companies, governments and others knowing uh, what's going on with your online activity? Even if you're having nothing to hide, it just feels downright creepy. Uh, I think you'll agree, and governments are getting more and more interested in what you're doing every day. And so, yeah, protecting your privacy is what VPN is all about. And how often do you uh, run across websites that you want to get information from only to find that they're geo-blocked? This is becoming an increasing problem, but ExpressVPN solves that problem for you. Uh, now, if you go to our special URL, you'll see quite a list of things this service can help you with, things you may never have thought of before. As I say, it's the one I use, secure, fast, and it just works. Uh, so protect yourself online today and find out more about how to get three months free at tryexpressvpn.com slash Space. That's T R Y E X P R E S S V P N dot com slash space for three months free with a one year package. Try expressvpn dot com slash space to learn more, and you'll find the link details in the show notes and on our website. Now, back to the show. Okay, we checked all four systems and being with a go. Space Nuts. Now, Fred, to a phenomenon that's uh, making news all around the world and hence our probable need to discuss it. Uh, this has been um, seen on major media uh, websites uh, all over the planet, uh, including some of the high-end organisations like the BBC, the ABC, NBC um, and uh, many, many others. Uh, this happened sort of local time Friday uh resulting in um, the announcement of a UFO uh, near Ireland, uh, spotted by a British Airways pilot who contacted Shannon Air Traffic Control. Now, obviously, um, this is going to create a lot of debate. Do we know yet what was seen? No. <laughs> ah, all right, that's a good that's answer. Not not as far as I know. Uh, look, it, it, it is possible that somebody might have fessed up and said, oh, yes, there were military exercises going on or something like that. But um, 
that was ruled out certainly in the reports I read uh, and I haven't seen any updates Andrew we might have to keep our eyes open for this uh, I, I, so what they what this pilot saw um, were she, she was flying into Shannon okay 647 local time it's pretty dark at that uh, time at this time of the year in uh, Western Ireland um, I've flown into Shannon, so I know where it is, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a great little airport actually down in the southwest there. But as she flew in, she was coming from Montreal. Uh, actually, she wasn't coming into Shannon; she was going in towards Heathrow, uh, London Heathrow. But um, when she passed by Shannon, she asked whether there were military exercises going on because something was moving very, very fast. Mm. Um, and she also reported a very bright light, uh, an object that came up along the left side of the aircraft and then rap rapidly veered to the north. Uh, she didn't know what it was. And um, I, I don't know whether other pilots saw that. Or yes, another pilot. This is uh, somebody on a Virgin aircraft um, he was suggesting natural phenomena like a meteor, although meteors don't change their direction; they go in a straight line because they're going so fast. Yes. Or, or a, a re, you know, a re-entry um, of, a, of a, a defunct satellite or something like that. Uh, but once again, that that's wouldn't not, change direction. Yeah, it wouldn't change direction. Um, and he said uh, his quotation was: "There were multiple objects following the same sort of trajectory; that they were very bright." The pilot said he saw two bright lights over to the right which climbed away at speed. Uh, and another pilot said that the speed was astronomical. It was like Mach 2, mm. uh, it's twice the speed of sound. So <clears throat> the, um, the, the IAA, the Irish Aviation Authority, has filed a report which will be investigated under the normal confidential occurrence investigation process. And a spokesperson for Shannon Airport, this is from the BBC's uh, report on it, a spokesperson for Shannon Airport said it would not be appropriate for the airport to comment while the IAA is investigating, while the investigation is ongoing. Very, so very convenient, any... but who can blame them? <laughs> yeah, we might not hear any more. But, but this comes on the heels, uh, Andrew, of something that I don't think we discussed, um, but about two or three months ago, there were there was a release of some I think there were confidential uh, hitherto confidential pe Pentagon documents, including uh, video footage showing objects that have been uh, imaged by uh, by uh, you know military pilots um, in their in their aircraft, and these were things that didn't that didn't seem to have any explanation. They were going very fast, didn't have any visible wings or anything like that, and behaved in a really counterintuitive way. What what are they? Well, I don't know. Um, oh, I know. Fast radio <laughs> base. The fast radio yeah. base. Uh, I wonder whether. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, um, well, could, could, it be, cats, could it be? Could the cats here? He probably knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, ball lightning, possibly. That is what I was going to say. Mm. Something related to that kind of phenomenon. Um, uh, my guess is that it's not aliens, <laughs> uh, because we have no other evidence of, uh, you know, of any kind of um, intelligent species anywhere else in the universe. We haven't got any evidence even of life elsewhere in the universe. Nope. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, it could be um, military testing, military probing by an unknown power, um, just being a bit provocative. Uh, I don't know the answer to it, but uh, you can bet your life that when, when an answer is found, you and I will be talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I suppose when it comes to military exercises or military activity, they're not always going to tell civilian authorities what they're up to. So That's correct. It's, it's, I, I would say it's very possible that there was some kind of uh, military activity or experimentation going on, and that's possibly what they saw ball lightning's a reasonable argument as well i mean it uh it seems to defy all known <laughs> yeah it does uh, logic when it comes to moving around in uh in our space so Although normally it's moving a lot more slowly you know yeah just yeah but this is much more slow it seems m more logical than defaulting to the alien side of the equation and <laughs> as you say we've got no proof of any life beyond earth i mean Logic says now that we're finding things that exist in our solar system, 
uh, <coughs> elsewhere that ultimately there must be some form of life somewhere else. But until we prove otherwise, uh, we're it. So yeah, we're- jumping straight to the theory that it, it, it must have been UFOs with aliens on board is, is a giant leap, and it's probably a very unreasonable leap to make. Uh, it's well, look, it's it's um, it's a fairly common leap. I was reading a yeah, scientific it is. It's paper very yesterday, common. <laughs> that, and this was a, from a, a scientist uh, who were uh, proposing that fast radio bursts. You and I have spoken about this. Fast radio bursts might be uh, caused by lasers using uh, used by alien species to drive solar sails along. Mm. Uh, it's really the last. You know, that's the last explanation you would want to come to, just because uh, it flies in the face of everything else that we know. So I, t- I hesitate to jump to the uh, the alien, the Irish alien uh, idea. I suspect we'll discover eventually that it was something else, and maybe, as you say, the most likely is un, um, or undetected or un, um, you know, un, unwarned uh, military activity. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a bit of a worry if it is, though, because if that's military activity, they've obviously gone under the radar as far as all the, you know, the um, uh, national detections are concerned, unless they were out in in uh, international airspace, which I guess is possible in this case. Well, I'm going to sound like a conspiracy theorist to a certain degree now, but I truly believe that the military capabilities of some authorities around the world are far, far more advanced than we're allowed to know. I think you're right there. Mm. I think it's pro- I think that is probably quite true. Yeah. yeah. So occasionally we're going to see something inexplicable, but there'll be a logical reason for it. We just don't know the secret. End of story. <laughs> Indeed, that's right. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, we don't really know what it was, uh, but it's certainly got uh, the media world chattering at the moment. So maybe there'll be an explanation sometime in the future. I suspect not. This is Space Nuts. Andrew Dunkley here with astronomer Fred Watson. Zero G and I feel fine. Space Nuts. Okay, Fred, uh, we're going to take a, a question now from uh, Rob from Victoria, one of the southern states of Australia, very tiny little place. Anyway, um, uh, Rob has got a couple of questions for us. Um, my probably very quick question is this. I've heard a few times, including in uh, If Memory Serves on your podcast, of things falling forever into a black hole. Is this because, as was portrayed in Interstellar, the closer you get to a black hole, the slower time passes, and so actually inside a black hole, time would be moving incredibly slowly relative to the outside? There is a bonus question, which we'll get to in a moment. (laughs) So uh, now, bearing in mind that it's impossible to enter a black hole because you'd be torn to shreds, um, let's assume you can for a moment. What happens to you in terms of time? Yeah. So for for you as the as the person falling into the black hole, um, you all you feel is the being torn to shreds, uh, and time doesn't time does not dilate for you. Your your passage of time as you fall into the black hole uh, is normal time. You just get pulled into a spaghetti, uh, the spaghettification process, because your gravity of your feet is much, uh, being felt by your feet is much higher than the gravity being felt by your head. And then eventually you disappear into the black hole, which itself is just a point. It's just a a point of infinite density. That's how a black hole is defined. Mm -hmm. Hard to imagine, really hard to imagine falling into a point, but that's what happens to you. Um, It's called a singularity. Now, the other bit of this, though, is that uh, this, for all it's a point, uh, of infinite density, what a black hole does <clears throat> is surrounds itself with a kind of cloak which we call the event horizon. And the event horizon is the uh, it, it's a, basically a, a, a sphere uh, whose distance from the black hole itself corresponds to the distance uh, at which light cannot escape from the black hole. So um, it's it's black. The event horizon is dark uh, because beyond that, no light is escaping. Um, and that is the bit that essentially signifies uh, it, what you might call in some ways the boundary of the black hole. Uh, and it is absolutely right that f- to an outside observer, as, as somebody or something falls in towards the black hole, 
um, the time appears to slow down. And in fact, it stops on the event horizon. So the event horizon is littered with uh, images of things that have fallen onto it. It's a very bizarre concept. Um, and in fact, of course, things don't just fall onto a black hole. They swirl around it. We have this thing called the accretion disk and yeah. the measurements of objects, uh, gas clouds actually uh, undergoing that process. But uh, it is totally counterintuitive. But yes, to our to an outside observer, uh, things slow down and there's what's called relativistic time dilation. It means that, yes, you fall forever into a black hole as seen from the outside. As seen from the inside, though, you go straight down to the middle and uh, never come out again. So for the traveller, it's a quick and painful death. Uh, for the observer, <coughs> it never ends. Yes, that's right. That's <laughs> exactly it. Yeah, great fun. Lots Work of fun. <laughs> uh, although, uh, Rob, we still haven't seen one. We still haven't, um, you know, we know of black holes' existence. We've talked about this a few times recently, but uh, we yeah. know of their existence simply because of the, um, well, the evidence around them and the evidence that um, uh, exists in mathematics and, um, uh, or, you know, it's, it's way beyond theory, but we haven't seen one. We still, yeah. we, we're hoping soon we might be able to say we've now... Image one. Image That's one. Right. With with the Event Horizon Telescope. Uh, which is the supermassive black hole that's been confirmed at the centre of our galaxy. That's the one. But <laughs> as, as, as of now, we actually haven't seen one. Um, but uh, Rob um, obviously um, got the idea from uh, that movie, Interstellar, which uh, portrayed time dilation very, very well indeed. And um, all sorts of strange th things happened in that in that story where people uh, aged while the others didn't because they were in a, um, within the effect of a black hole on a planet, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It was very, very cleverly done. And um, uh, we thank you for your question, Rob. Now, uh, Rob has a part two to his question, Fred, which I'm very uh, hesitant to, um, <laughs> to, to, to uh, sort of deal with. My bonus second question is, Andrew is clearly a sci-fi nut. What gave you that idea? Um, no, he's, he's, no, Andrew's. Uh, he's he's wrong. There, he's Rob. You're just a nut, not a side yeah. man. <laughs> and that would be um, that would be true. Yeah, um, space nut. <laughs> he's asked me to um, list my top five science fiction movies. Um, that's really hard because I I love them all, but uh, I would say The Martian would be my number one. It's a fairly recent film. Loved The Martian. You and I have talked about the, uh, yeah, yeah. the, yeah. the truth of it, whether or not yes. it's possible. <laughs> a lot of it turns out to be possible. Um, a few other elements not. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Passengers. Passengers was a sci-fi about uh, humans moving to another world, but they had to be, um, you know, it was a journey of, what, 190 years or something. And it was a, you know about people who kind of woke up too early and what happened to them. So I would say Passengers is definitely up there. Um, Red Planet. And uh, I, I, there was a related movie released around the same time, um, and the name escapes me at the moment, but both of those I rate in my, in my top five. Mission to Mars, it was. Um, I'm struggling to put a number, number five on the list simply because I can't recall a name. <laughs> uh, but look, um, no, I, I just I, I do tend to like these these ones that involve um, travel, uh, the more realistic approach to to space travel rather than the super sci fi's uh, that are a little bit out there. But I suppose I have to include the entire Star Wars series <laughs> as my as my number five. There you go. Now, do you, uh, do you, want, do, do you want my two pounds? Oh, go as for well. it. Yeah, please. Yeah. Fred. So, so look, I'm, I'm not actually a big sci-fi enthusiast, only because I never have time to do it. I'm too worried, I'm too busy doing real science. But um, my all-time favourite has to be still uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey, just because I thought that was a very profound story and um, uh, had lots in it that, uh, uh, you know, that impacted. Um, uh, the way we live our lives uh, and when it came out in 1968 and I saw it so that's 50 years ago uh, it's uh, I thought well by 2001 I'm sure we'll be tripping backwards and forwards to the moons of Jupiter uh, of course that turned out not to be correct um, but the other one I liked much more recent one I think it was only two years ago was Arrival 
uh, and Arrival is the story of oh, yes. alien spacecraft that land and how you trans how you uh, communicate with the aliens inside. Oh, that was a brilliant movie. That was yes, and and I had actually had to watch it a few times to get my head around it all because it also involved uh, a different understanding of time, and yes, that was right. portrayed in the film in a way that that I was very slow to pick up on. And I had to watch it. I think I've watched it three times now, and it's just starting to work itself out in my brain as to what's going on. Um, but yeah, fascinating film. Absolutely loved it. Um, but it's it's really deep. You've got to focus. Turn your phone off. Don't you know? Kick everyone out and don't let them interrupt <laughs> you because you've got to concentrate on that. It is a it is a great film. Fantastic film. I do like those ones that really provoke your um your imagination. Yeah. yeah, mm. yeah. Now. To the part I've been trying to avoid, Rob also <laughs> asked if I would recite recite some Vogon poetry. Now I did a bit of homework on this, Rob. Uh, apparently, the BBC once had a Vogon poetry generator online where you could put in some keywords uh, to, as answers to a certain set of questions, and they would email you a Vogon poem uh, for your personal amusement. I tried it, and the website was shut down. So, unfortunately, <laughs> I wasn't able to create my own Vogon poem but I did discover one that everybody knows and loves and I was very very pleased to see that the first line relates to you Fred <laughs> oh freddled grunt bugly thy mercurations are to me as plurdled gabble blotchetus on lurgid bee that's as much as I want to say Oh gosh, I'm, I'm I'm moved to tears, Andrew. That's uh, that's the nicest recitation of Vogon poetry I've ever heard. Yes, uh, <laughs> and I did it with a cold, which probably is why it works. I think yes, you have to have a cold yeah. to do Vogon yeah. poetry. Yeah. Mm. So there well, you go, Rob. Get back, get back to your Vogon constructor fleet and, uh, <laughs> and get on with your job. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think so. But yeah, thanks for all the questions. Thanks for the the fun because um, it, it value adds when we can have fun. I think. Uh, Fred, as always, uh, thank you to you. It's uh, it's been a joy as usual. A great pleasure, Andrew, and I look forward to talking again next week. Indeed, when we know what the UFO is, <laughs> and we will catch you next time on Space Nuts. Space Nuts. You've been listening to the Space Nuts podcast. Subscribe to the full podcast on iTunes, Audio Boom, and Stitcher, or your favourite podcast distributor. This has been another quality podcast production from Sites.com. With Kroger brand products from Bakers, you can make all your favorite things this holiday season. Because Kroger brand's proven quality products come at exceptionally low prices. And with a money-back quality guarantee, every dish is sure to be a favorite. These are a few of my favorite things. Whether you shop delivery, pickup, or in-store... Kroger brand has all your favorite things. Bakers, fresh for everyone. With Kroger brand products from Bakers, you can make all your favorite things this holiday season. Because Kroger brand's proven quality products come at exceptionally low prices. And with a money-back quality guarantee, every dish is sure to be a favorite. These are a few of my favorite things. Whether you shop delivery, Pick up or in store, Kroger brand has all your favorite things. Bakers, fresh for everyone.